primary sclerosing cholangitis and primary biliary cholangitis, previously known as primary biliary cirrhosis, are both forms of cholestatic liver disease leading to cirrhosis and liver failure. However, they are two separate diseases. They're both called cholestatic due to poor flow of bile through the liver and bile ducts. Normally, bile is produced by the hepatocytes of the liver and travels through the intrahepatic and extrahepatic biliary ducts into the intestine to help digest and absorb fats. In both primary sclerosing cholangitis and primary biliary cholangitis, the end result is increased resistance to bile flow, causing bile to build up in the liver, leading to chronic inflammation and eventually cirrhosis. Primary sclerosing cholangitis is a chronic progressive condition characterized by inflammation and scarring of the intrahepatic and extrahepatic bile ducts, leading to hardening, which is where the sclerosing part of the name comes from, strictures, meaning narrowing, and therefore an obstruction to bile flow. Some segments are unaffected, giving the typical beads on a string appearance that is often an exam question. It is rare, with a prevalence of around 6 per 100,000, but this is believed to be due to underdiagnosis. It is seen twice as commonly in males than in females, with a peak between the ages of 30 and 40. There is a strong link between primary sclerosing cholangitis and inflammatory bowel disease, in particular ulcerative colitis, with approximately 80% suffering from inflammatory bowel disease. Although the exact pathophysiology is not currently known, it is thought that it is an immune-mediated condition rather than a true autoimmune condition. There is genetic predisposition, in particular, it is more prevalent in patients with the HLA, B2 and DR3 subtypes. It is also thought that the patients have a disruption in their biliary epithelium. Due to the close relationship with inflammatory bowel disease, it has been hypothesized that there is a movement of bacteria from the gut into the portal system, generating a systemic inflammatory response, which then disrupts the biliary epithelium leading to exposure of the colocytes to bile acids and therefore injury. The flow of bile out of the liver is decreased, meaning more bile remains in the liver, leading to more chronic inflammation and scarring, giving a vicious cycle where the bile flow obstruction continuously worsens, ultimately resulting in cirrhosis of the liver. On average, the survival rate is around 15 years from diagnosis, typically reaching biliary cirrhosis in around that time. A potential complication of primary sclerosing cholangitis is cholangiocarcinoma, which is a primary malignancy of the bile ducts. This occurs in around 1 in 5 patients and features a poor prognosis. There is also an increased risk of other hepatobiliary cancers, including hepatocellular carcinoma and gallbladder malignancy, as well as colorectal cancers and pancreatic cancer. Many patients are asymptomatic, with around 50% being asymptomatic and the condition being found incidentally. But the most common symptom is fatigue, and others such as fever, itching, and non-specific upper abdominal pain are also commonly seen. Jaundice, or a yellow discoloration of the skin or mucosa, due to buildup of bilirubin in the body, is another possible feature. Patients may also have deficiencies in the fat-soluble vitamins and can directly present with cirrhosis. Lab markers in primary sclerosing cholangitis typically involve a raised alkaline phosphatase and possibly a raised ALT and AST, and autoantibodies are found in 97% of cases specifically anti-smooth muscle or anti-nuclear antibodies in 75% of cases, and anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies, or PE anchor. However, the gold standard for the diagnosis is cholangiography, specifically 
MRCP, the characteristic finding is strictures separated by normal segments of bile ducts, giving the appearance of beads on a string that we mentioned. There is currently no definitive treatment for primary sclerosing cholangitis. Liver transplants are done as they improve mortality. However, the recurrence of primary sclerosing cholangitis is still a risk after a liver transplant. Ursodeoxycholic acid is sometimes prescribed, which leads to improved liver function tests. However, studies have shown little or limited benefit of using the medication in terms of survival or in symptoms. Cholesteramine is a bile acid sequestrant that is used to relieve symptoms such as itching, and immunosuppressants and antifibrotic drugs such as cyclosporin, tacrolimus and methotrexate have not shown consistent clinical improvement in these patients either. Now we'll take a look at primary biliary cholangitis, which is also a chronic and progressive condition. In this case, it is a true autoimmune condition that leads to destruction of the small intrahepatic bile ducts, leading to cholestasis. Primary biliary cholangitis is not as rare as primary sclerosing cholangitis and is estimated to have a prevalence of 35 per 100,000. It has a female to male ratio of 9 to 1 and this is mostly seen in middle age. To highlight this, It's thought that around 1 in 1,000 women over the age of 45 have the condition. As we said, primary biliary cholangitis is considered an autoimmune condition. It is more common in females and it also has associations with other autoimmune diseases like celiac disease, Sjogren syndrome and thyroiditis. It is thought that a reduction in immune tolerance in middle age leads to targeting of the small interlobular bile ducts by the immune system. This leads to their destruction and progressively worsening bile flow leading to cholestasis, chronic inflammation and then cirrhosis. Specifically, anti-mitochondrial antibodies are thought to target lipoic acid, particularly pyruvate dehydrogenase complex E2 on the biliary epithelial cells. Although primary biliary cholangitis is a progressive disease, there are some instances where the progression is minimal and in some cases remission is induced. But on average, the terminal stages are reached 15 to 20 years from diagnosis. There is an increased risk of developing hepatocellular carcinoma and osteoporosis. Once again, a large proportion of patients are asymptomatic which is believed to be 50 to 60% that are only found due to abnormal liver function tests. Fatigue remains the most common symptom, seen in around 80% of symptomatic patients, and itchiness or pruritus is seen in around 20 to 70% of cases. Other findings include jaundice and hyperpigmentation. As we said, there is a connection to other autoimmune conditions, and around 60% of patients will suffer from one of them. The diagnostic criteria for primary biliary cholangitis requires an elevated alkaline phosphatase of 1.5 times the upper limit of normal, histological evidence of non-suppurative chronic biliary duct destruction, and the presence of AMA antibodies at a titer of 1 to 40 or higher. Anti-mitochondrial antibodies are positive in 90% of cases, and this is a marker that has high specificity. Anti-nuclear antibodies are present in around 50% of cases. Two out of three of these points are required for diagnosis. Imaging like MRCP can be done. In this instance, it is more so to exclude primary sclerosin cholangitis or masses causing obstruction. In contrast to primary sclerosin cholangitis, Primary biliary cholangitis often has a good response to ursodeoxycholic acid. It is thought that as it is incorporated into bile, it reduces the toxicity to the biliary epithelium and thereby decreases inflammation. However, around 40% of cases are resistant to the ursodeoxycholic acid. Obeticholic acid is a relatively new synthetic bile acid that is used if ursodeoxycholic acid 
has failed or is not tolerated. It is a Farnesoid X receptor agonist, which when activated leads to reduced bile acid synthesis and increased clearance, as well as reducing inflammation. Symptomatic treatment like cholesterimine for itching is used in primary biliary cholangitis as well. Liver transplantation is an option in end-stage patients or non-responders to medication, but recurrence is thought to happen in around 20% of cases.